Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrated pan and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. This is December the 9th. This is episode 25 of the Artist Friends Podcast, and this is Clyde J. Kell, and I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Okay. Uh, with this episode, you know, Art Basel was going on in um, Miami. And one particular piece of artwork that made the news, if you haven't heard about it, there's some uh, French artists doing uh, uh, weird, weird things and weird works of art. Uh, his gallery that represented him posted, took a banana, an actual banana, and taped it to the wall with a piece of duct tape. The first one sold to a French woman who I guess is rather rich. She paid one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for it, and then he sold two. They sold two others for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And of course, the art world is just going nuts, you know, on the internet, you know, about it. Negative and pro comments, and some of the videos to which I recommended for us to watch this week was um, one in particular was. Is my art good enough? And I think my take on this um, is that I personally don't care what money a millionaire spends on artwork. I don't care how they spend their money. It's their money. They do with it whatever they want. However, this, this phenomenon in the art market with these weird pieces of artwork and everything should give Every, especially young artist, should give every artist hope. When you say to yourself, and artists do this, they beat themselves up, and they say, my art is not good enough. Believe me, like I posted on, on Facebook, if you can draw a stick man, you're better than that guy. <laughs> doesn't make any difference if it doesn't sell for $120,000, but your art is good enough, and keep at it. So, uh, Diane, what, are, what do you think about this? <laughs> I wish I had been there. <laughs> I put my own banana on the wall. It would be nice to get that money, but um, yeah, it's a little bit crazy. I, I just can't imagine somebody would have that kind of money to buy a banana stuck on the wall with duct tape. <laughs> but I think if I had that kind of money, I I could have spent it a little bit wiser. But you know, who's to say that's not a wise wasn't a wise choice? I don't know. It's just a little strange. 
to most of us, I think. <laughs> yes, to the ordinary uh, person, it is. It's very strange. But like, like I said, <laughs> you know, a millionaire, you do, you, you, uh, hey, spend your money the way you want. And, you know, just because you're a millionaire or billionaire doesn't mean you're the smartest person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Having money doesn't necessarily make you smart. <laughs> Constance, what do you think about this? <laughs> well, I think it's great. I mean, as far as I'm see it, you know, he's an entrepreneur and he made a great sale and he's made a great name for himself. And it's like his emergence into the art community, you know, and he's probably just going cha-ching and, and just <laughs> laughing and smiling all the way to the bank, which is what I would be doing you know, and wondering what would be the next thing I could do to, to earn that kind of recognition again, you know, I, I just think it's wonderful. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really do believe it should just, this should give hope to uh young <laughs> starting. Now. Don't think of it as, as, as something, you know, my God, I, I don't have a chance against it. No, you have a definite chance against it. Yes, these yeah well the thing is you never know what somebody is willing to pay for it's like you know mm -hmm. one man's one man's trash is another man's treasure kind of thing it's like you never know yeah exactly. you know where people are coming from and if they have money in their pocket to burn they'll burn it <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank goodness for that it on. <laughs> that's why they say but, yes art, it's, it's kind of crazy art is so subjective you know and everything and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> What do you think about that, that video on the, some of the comments that lady was uh, giving advice? She was giving about uh, my art is not good enough. Did you guys get a chance to watch that? You know. Well, it's the same thing with that. Like um, when people ask her, you know, if her if their art was good enough to be selling it or whatever, and she really doesn't want to give an opinion because it is all subjective. And it's, it, I mean, she might not like it, but somebody else might. There's so many, you know, so many different people in the world and what their idea of good art is might be completely different than what your idea is. So it's, it's an open book, really. It's anybody can be, you know, can like your stuff. So it's exactly, I mean, I think it's just wonderful myself. <laughs> I think, uh, during, uh, our course when we was, when we was, uh, now nah, I got can't believe it's been three years ago. Uh, one of the videos that uh, Paul Klein had recommended was uh, from uh, Carmen Camille. That was her name. Yeah, can't remember. Camille Seaman. Yes, and she gave a lecture that uh, she was always taught. You know, her uh, Native American heritage was taught that you are a billion years in the making, and that you are unique and that your story is unique and only your story and i think that artists if we uh, we keep that in mind when we're creating our art that that is something that is unique from us so maybe this guy bananas and duct tape on the wall was unique to him but <laughs> our the it gets back to that that subjection that subjective you know that art art is uh, subjective and that I personally believe I hear other comments, you know, I read, you know, read quite a bit on social media. You know, I have followed quite a few artists and um, <clears throat> some of them, you know, will say, well, there are so many artists. There's too many artists in the world. How can I sell my art? I personally believe we don't have enough artists in the world because think about this. You are, us as artists, we are 1% of 1% of the world's population that we have the ability. And I seriously believe we have the ability as a gift, a gift from God. And for those who don't believe in that well, then a gift of whoever, whoever you believe is a gift that was given to us and we should utilize it and share it with the world. So regardless of, uh, Somebody's willing to pay $120,000 or $150,000 for a banana taped to a wall. Uh, there's somebody else who's willing to pay some money for your artwork. So to continue making your art and continue to uh, share, share it with the world. And uh, don't worry about it. You know, it's 
not good enough. It's good enough for somebody. Well, the thing is, too, you need to um, realize that you are a unique individual. And, and no matter how many people, I mean, you can line up artists right next to one another, all painting the same thing, and they'll all turn out differently. We all see things in our own way. And if you, you need to um, hold on to what makes you you and get that onto your canvas or into your artwork because the person right next to you can do, make the same exact thing and it'll be their version of it. So you don't want to be like comparing yourself to other artists or like, you know, trying to be like yeah. somebody else that you think is successful or whatever, because that's not really who you are um, inside. And that comes across on your, on, in your artwork. Absolutely. And that, uh, I mean, we've, we've said that many times in previous podcasts, and it's worth repeating, repeating over and over again. It's like, I think I used an analogy one time, you know, like when you wash your hair, you read on a bottle of shampoo, you know, it says, it says, you know, wet hair, apply, scrub, rinse, repeat. <laughs> we've got to think of our art it's like washing our hair. Repeat, rinse, repeat. Rinse, repeat, <laughs> just keep, yeah, and keep at it. And when you do that, your your uh, your your story is coming about. Your uh, you know all these little you know strategies. This gets into what Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, we always talk about him, and it's why I, I am so committed and enjoy listening to. Yeah, he talks about you know some of his a lot of his videos. You know, seem to be business focused. You know, but they're also human focused. That, uh, you know, I love it when he used the analogies. And I, he says, think about it. He says, the fact that you are a human being is a trillion to one. You won the lottery. Your mother or your father could have went and got an extra bottle of beer and, and missed the chance to create you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and of course, he, or you could saying, be a gnat. <laughs> I'm not saying the way he says it, you know, with the street language, you know. But nonetheless, he says, so stop. You know, stop, uh, you know, crying, you know, and get down to business. You know, his motivational speaks or talks are just, just, those are what I, you know, pick up. And that's what I think. Every time I start feeling, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, I haven't sold anything for a while or I haven't got a commission in a while. Okay. I pop, I look at a Gary Manichek video, you know, it's a little short 15 minute videos and Yeah. I'm going to do it. <laughs> what about you guys? You guys have been enjoying Gary Vaynerchuk videos that I, I've been presenting, you know, sharing with you? Yeah. I like the one because the one about the art is, is good enough, you know, because she was – one of the things that she says is like Gary Vaynerchuk, you've got to, you've got to work at it every day in order to develop your own personality and style, you know, which is – which is true. I mean, I don't get to work at it every day, but I try to work at it as many days as I possibly can, you know. Um, but young people that are younger, you know, can work at it a lot more because they're more energetic. But yeah, I think that being, being a person, when you stop and think about the grand scheme of things, you could be a grasshopper that was <laughs> hatched out to be food for a chicken, you know. <laughs> <laughs> come along and just peg you up i mean we are we it's it's pretty wild that we're humans instead of you know an amoeba or something <laughs> yep. so, yeah fun exactly you know um well i don't know what else to say here i think we beat this to death uh <laughs> the uh uh i'm gonna throw something extra i didn't tell you guys in advance we haven't done this in a while. What's our tip of the week? Who wants to offer a tip of the week? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to get quiet now. Go on. <laughs> you want to offer one, Diane? Um, I think you need to just put yourself out. Be willing to put yourself out there. Be vulnerable and, and let people know who you are as a person. I think, you know, the whole thing. Gary talked about this, too, a little bit and how important your story is. And, you know, it goes kind of along with our conversation here tonight that we are all individuals and we have so many 
different factors that have come into our lives to create who we are as a person and our art the way it is that you really need to embrace that and um, let people know like what things happen to you in your life to to cause you to create the stuff the work you do and tell more about your back you know the story that got you where you are today i think that's something that um people really want to connect with because a lot of people aren't especially people that aren't artists they don't understand how we can create something out of nothing like you know you have this idea and a blank canvas or whatever you know whatever just materials of whatever kind of you know art you do and you're just putting all that stuff together in a way that makes something cohesive it's like you know it's kind of magical to people that can't do that or can't um express themselves in that way so it's it is a unique thing and i don't think it's appreciated enough and, and i don't think we I think we as artists don't appreciate it. Like we, we don't realize what a gift that is. Like, you know, cause a lot of people can't do that. Absolutely. So I think it's really important to put that out there and let people know. That's a good tip. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, you know, be yourself, you know, and there's so many, so many different, you know, motivational speakers and whatever. They, they all talk about that. It's all the same thing. Uh, same, you know, theme. And uh, we're not talking about, well, let's say today I sat down and I made some eggs and well, if it's not related to your painting, come on. I and mean, we're talking about relating to, you know, what motivates you, what inspired you to create that particular piece of artwork. And that's what people connects with. And I have seen it so many times in my own art with you know, comments. I've created a piece of artwork that I just kind of thought it was crap, which is really, I have a, I'm very critical of my own work and, there's stuff that I just absolutely don't like. And when I started this journey, there was a lot of work I didn't share. I didn't put up because I thought it was crap. And my own daughters encouraged me. They said, no, that is wonderful. Put that up. Okay. So then now I, I just put everything up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I am amazed at the, the feedback that I get that people are just, you know, fascinated with it. And then they, and always invariably what happens is they want to know, well, why did you do that? Why'd you create that? What's the story behind it? And it's like Diane said, that's a very good tip. Yeah. People, people are just fascinated and amazed. And I think as us, as artists, the fact that we have this ability, we just kind of take it for granted, you know? And, and mm -hmm. Well, I think too, you don't, a lot of times, as an artist, you don't even think about like why you're doing something or where it's coming from. You just, it just does, you know, and then when you have to explain it to people, you realize where it came from and what, why you're doing it. And it's like, it's like a confirmation of, of what you're doing and why you're, do, you're, you know, you're like confirming where it's all coming from. And it, it does make you look at it a different way. Constance, you've been kind of quiet. You want to add something to that? No, you know, a lot of times I paint things because I want to make a beautiful painting or I want to make a whatever kind of painting. And a lot of times I don't really have a story behind it. I just want to paint something and that's what I end up painting. And it's very hard for me to describe or put a story behind what I'm doing because Maybe it's just a picture I took of a sunset that I really liked, you know, or, a land, you know, a photograph that I really liked or went out and painted something because it was a nice day, but I don't have a story. So I get really stumped when people want to know, well, what's your story about that? Well, I don't know. Well, it, the thing is, it doesn't have to be something that's, that. yeah, it doesn't have to be something that's really deep. I mean, sometimes it might be, but it might just be like, it was a beautiful sunset and it, struck me in a way that I wanted to record that I mean, yeah, like, I mean, but I yeah, if you think about like why that is like I, I wonder about that a lot because I do so much nature um, artwork like what is it about nature that we as human beings love to be around it and to see it and to be in it out in it it's just like magnificent and magnificent I guess I mean some of the sunsets we have here are just absolutely magnificent. Yeah, but there's some kind of out. connection that we have as human beings to 
the um, things of the planet. Like, I guess I'm, I'm more in tune with that since that's what I kind of do, you know, so into doing nature. But um, I, I think about that a lot. Like, what is it about nature that we are so drawn to? Yeah. Uh, it's just beautiful, I guess. You know, and that's the way <laughs> I look at it. I think, well, I just want to make a, you know, because it's a beautiful day, I want to make a nice painting you know, of the beautiful day, you know, and I don't know what else to say about it. I get really stumped when it comes to saying things about stuff that I've done, you know, uh, so. Well, what you've got to do also, Constance, and, uh, is not worry about thinking deep, like Diane said, you don't necessarily have, to, you know, I just said you happen to that beautiful sunset struck you and and made warmed your heart and maybe you was having a bad day and then you saw that sunset and you decided to capture it you know in in a painting or a drawing and it just so you could remember it forever you know mm -hmm. type thing that's a story in itself you know that uh you uh it just there are uh, the, some of the sunsets here are fabulous you know yeah and, and there are get them put down on canvas or paper or Absolutely. whatever you put it on now there are other artists and these artists they just it, when i read you know and i read about it you know uh it it just irritates me knowing you know uh this piece was created in order to uh support uh climate change or to support the uh, death in the world and okay fine but it sounds so forced <laughs> You know, trying to, yeah. As artists, we don't have to be forced. We really don't have to. If we just, not every piece has to be deep thought. <laughs> I have to try to remember that one. <laughs> not every piece of artwork has to express a deep meaning of life. Especially some of the abstracts I do. I just really like painting them you know and it's just for the sheer joy of painting them that i like to do it you know so i really don't know much more about it other than that gets you oh and i put these all these colors together and see what happens on the canvas you know yeah. and if i don't like it i'll get it sanded or alter it or something else and do something else with it you know and, so. and that's what uh you know gets into you know you've heard uh, different uh, coaches you mentioned feeding the artist's soul that's what that's about you are feeding your soul and that's all as uh, as artists so in line with diane's tip tip we'll we'll, we'll finish up uh tonight with uh, the thought of feed your soul artists do what you like don't worry about if it's a banana on a wall with a piece of duct tape and you're gonna say feed your soul <laughs> one hundred twenty thousand dollars just actually take that banana off the wall and eat it okay <laughs> <laughs> I That's think I it. would if I paid that much for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's and that's it for this episode. Episode twenty five of the Artist Friends Podcast. Thank you to everyone for listening to us uh rant and uh chatter along. I hope that uh we're informative and encouraging, especially our young listeners, our young artists out there. Keep up the work, keep working. And don't be afraid to share your work. Your artwork is good enough. Believe me, it's good enough. We'll say goodbye to Diane. Goodbye to Constance. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Drosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com.
If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.